Oh my god. Hi, Captain Ken here from Jack's Charter Service and Catch-22. Uh, we're back at you today with talking about our connections for copper line. So, uh, we get all of our copper in 3,000 foot spools. Uh, it works out better for us to um, make what we're doing, but you can buy them in small spools where it's whatever it is. If you want 200 feet of copper, 300 feet of copper, 400, whatever. It is um, on our boats, uh, I'll show you later on, but we have coppers in all of the segments of that we would have uh, lead core to get to the exact same depth. They have different properties. Uh, copper works better some days. Uh, lead core works better some days. There's differences that'll be in a different video to come. Today I'm just uh, here to show you the connection that we use uh, in the copper itself. So we use a 45 pound Howie uh, copper wire. Um, I found it to be the best. It has twice the sink rate of regular lead core. So an example before we show this knot, if you're running a 10 color lead core, so 10 colors, 300 feet of lead, you would run 150 feet of copper, 45 pound copper, to get to the exact same depth or close to the same depth as uh, lead core. So our connection here, what we need. We need um, our shrink tubing. We need a lighter. We need uh, our spro swivels. Uh, we use, uh, this is a size eight. So 50 pound is what they are. We need some super glue and uh, that's it. So if this is the copper that you're putting on your rod, uh, so you have backing, we use uh, 30 pound big game monofilament backing in a video to come. I'll explain why I use big game monofilament backing rather than something like a power pro or a braid or something like that we've been through all of them uh it's just that we like mono backing better now so you take a segment of uh the shrink tubing and slide it over your copper line so you've got that slid onto there now now what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of our spro swivels And this is the part that is just a little bit harder. We're going to put it through the eye of the spro swivel. Put through a couple inches. You only need to go through once if you want to. Um, I'm going to end up going through this spro swivel twice. And I'll show you why. As soon as I get it done. We use a smaller spro swivel because remember this is going to end up going through the uh all of the eyes of the rod obviously and then it's going into the reel so you're going to end up winding this onto the reel itself you don't want to take up too much space if you don't have to but you also want it to be strong enough that it works all right, so I'm gonna show you here now in a second as I've got this through a second time. All right, here we are. We're going through, I'm gonna show you this in a white background so that you can see it. We have uh, the spro swivel going through again. So we've gone, the copper is going through the spro swivel twice. We're gonna pull that tight. When we pull it tight, it just makes uh, the loop get tight at the spro swivel. Now what we're going to do, so this other end of the spro swivel, this open end is going to go to either your backing on your rod or the fluorocarbon leader on the bait end of the rod. Either or, it doesn't matter. So now we take this and we just uh, wrap this now. As tightly as you can wrap it, it uh, 
doesn't really matter. We wrap it uh, five, six times around the copper. So we're just wrapping the copper on the copper itself. So now you can see it's wrapped up there. We're going to cut the tag end of the copper off. Push it down as close as we can. So now we have it like that. So it's just wrapped in there tight. Now this alone, it's not gonna pull off. It never has pulled off. It's uh, good. But we take uh, one step further and get our super glue here and just put some super glue on that entire segment, but not on the spro swivel because we still want the swivel to do what it's supposed to do. Now, under normal circumstances, uh, we would take this and let this dry. So uh, however amount of time you wanna let it dry to get it actually dried. Now you're gonna take the shrink tubing. So the reason for the shrink tubing that we use the shrink tubing is because of the fact that I wanna cover up uh, this end of it that we've wrapped so that none of that starts to fray. So now we just get our shrink tubing here and slide it over the end of the copper. Hold on one second here. So we've got our shrink tubing now over the end of the copper, as you can see. It's leaving the swivel open so that the swivel can do what it's supposed to do. And now you could use a, tar a torch, a lighter, whatever it is that you want to use. When you're doing this on the side that has, uh, when you have the monofilament or the fluorocarbon attached here, obviously be more careful so that you're not getting anywhere close to the other end of this because if you heat up the monofilament or fluorocarbon, it's obviously gonna become weaker. So that right there is your attachment. Now this winds right through all of the guides easily. It winds onto the reel easily. It's uh, still flexible. You can uh, move it around. Um, great connection because of the fact that it doesn't fail. When you see this uh, start to get if it does start to get messed up because of the fact that a planer board slid on it or something like that we use offshore planer boards with or 16s so we don't get a lot of sliding of anything of our planer boards obviously then on the opposite side of this if this would be our side going to uh, our fluorocarbon so to the bait then you're just going to tie your regular knot to the bait one other thing that i just want to show you um as well is if you have problems with the copper itself. So let's say that you get a, a tangle. Um, a wire diver comes up into your copper line and the hook gets into the copper and splits it and you ruin a couple of the filaments of the copper, uh, the strands of the copper. You can literally just take the copper. Most people know about this already, but there's some people that when they see us do it on the boat, they're just amazed. So if we have a problem with the copper where we get a split like that, we just cut both ends of it to cut that area out. So if it's just an area that happened with an inch or two or whatever it actually is, just cut it out. If you're running a 300 copper uh, and you cut out two inches, it's not gonna make any appreciable difference for what you're doing. If it's that you're cutting out 15 feet, rather than throw away all the copper, you can fix that segment. Just grab 15 feet off of your roll of copper and add it back to it. So now literally what we do, <clears throat> and you can do this once again with just twisting it. I'm gonna put uh, our shrink tubing over an end of it. Literally just take the two pieces of copper and twist them together. So all we're gonna do is twist. Um, 
eye twist about five to seven times on each side of that splice, putting it back together. And when we first started doing this, you would just leave it. You can pull as hard as you want to. And you're not gonna pull those two pieces of copper apart from one another. But once again, you have like little frayed edges uh, from the ends of the copper. So what we'll end up doing is we'll end up taking our super glue once again, putting super glue over the copper itself, over that area where the connection was. Under normal circumstances, once again, I would just let it dry and then end up taking the shrink tubing and putting it over that connection so that we don't have the ends of it. Once again, shrink it on there, around all the different sides. Good. Your connection's great then. You don't have any frays coming out of the uh, copper. You have it covered. Uh, it's a way that you don't have to replace the copper all the time. There's some people that tell us that they think that the copper is too expensive to continue to go through that all the time. There are some people that for a period of time, they were just, when they got a fray, they would throw all the copper away. It's pretty pricey to throw all the copper away uh, when you can fix it. This connection's not coming undone. I have never had one of these connections come undone and lost a fish. Um, there are times, once again, this is gonna go through all of the eyes of the rod, eyelets, and then it's gonna go into the reel. Um, so it's gonna get compressed, line's gonna be over the top of it. It works perfectly fine though. We've had uh, no issues, like I said, with it breaking. So it makes the ability for, uh, I believe, your copper to last longer because you can just put splices in it. Obviously, there gets a point where, you know, if you have five or six or whatever the number of splices in it that you have, you know, maybe you want to think about replacing the copper at some point. Um, but we've never had failure with this. Hopefully this helps you guys out with uh, the termination of what we use for our copper to our backing and then to our fluorocarbon leader. Um, like I said in the beginning, we use all uh, Howie copper, 3,000 foot spools is what we get. All of our backing is a uh, big game. Um, so Berkeley big game, we use 30 pound test. Found it to be the best, like I said, in a future video, we're gonna talk about why. Our fluorocarbon leaders, we use all blood run. And if we're uh, doing a copper leader or lead core leader, we use uh, 30 pound blood run. We use 40 pound blood run for our flies. Um, that's it. Uh, once again, if you have, uh, we've been getting lots of different messages, people messaging me, calling me, uh, letting me know what they want to see in future videos. If you want to see something specific in a future video, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, you can reach us at 414-349-4077. Uh, Thanks so much. This is Captain Ken from Jack's Charter Service and our YouTube page, Catch22. Please, uh, Subscribe and uh, watch your videos, share them with other people. Uh, it's been pretty informative so far and going well. Thanks so much. Have a great day.